Setting up a promotion in Merchant Center is one of the fastest ways that you can radically increase the visibility of your shopping ads in your shopping and performance max campaigns. And because of that, in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up a promotion in Google Merchant Center that you can then use in your shopping and performance max campaigns. But before I take you through that step-by-step -step process, I wanna take you through three strategies that I use for promotions inside of my Google Ads campaigns and the reason for why these three strategies are really really important is because you want to really avoid getting into a race to the bottom on price because running promotions the wrong way is a very fast way that you can devalue your brand and also really lower your profit margins and even sometimes lowering your profit margins so much that your business is just not viable anymore so while using promotions in Google Merchant Center is a really powerful tool for your business you need to really think about how you want to strategically use your promotions so that you're just not having that race to the bottom where you're only getting sales because you're running heavily discounted products. It's just not a good strategy for longevity in your business. And one of the most extreme cases that I saw is that we came on to do some consulting for an external e-commerce brand and they had just run a 70% off sale and that was off the back of regular monthly 30 to 50% off sales. And what they had done is that they had trained their audience to hold off on purchase purchasing until they saw a sale. They got into this death spiral loop, which I like to call, where they saw low sales for a month, so then they wanted to add in a sale to boost the sales at the end of the month. And then after they'd done that for a couple of months, they had to increase the level of their discount all the way up to where it was a 70% off site-wide sale. Now, that sale on itself was successful in that it drove up a massive amount of revenue, but what it did do, it then robbed that company of sales for the next three to four months. And it actually took us over a year to be able to repair that and get their promotion cycle back onto a sustainable and profitable strategy. So with promotions, it's always remember, it's a fine balancing act that you really want to make sure that you get right. Because yes, you wanna use your promotions to bring in new customers, but you don't wanna alienate your loyal customers who get annoyed because they just bought a product and then they've seen that it's gone on sale. So I want you to think about your promotion strategy, and here are three options that you can use. And the first one is, is that rather than running store-wide promotions, run product category-based promotions. And a great way Way of doing this is running promotions on a product category which is just about to go out of season. So some perfect examples of this would be to run a promotion on your summer based products at the end of summer or run a promotion on your winter based products at the end of winter. So then that way you're able to bring in some potential new customers or really eke out some extra sales from your loyal customers but because it's at the end of the season, people who bought the same product at full price at the start of the season are not gonna get too annoyed because they know that next season you'll have new designs or new patterns out so they're not too annoyed about that process. And the second strategy is that you can focus on bundles or multiple product sales. And what you're looking at doing here is that yes, you are giving a discount, but you're only giving the discount to people who are paying above your current average order value. So for example, let's just say that in your e-commerce store, you've got a long-term history of an average order value of being around about $70. What you can do is you can put together a bundle of similar products that may have a 20 or 30% discount on it, but the total bundle price is $140. So it's double your average order value, so then you're rewarding people who are prepared to pay more, or secondly, what you can do is that you can have a promotion where they only get a discount on their third or fourth purchased item. So a classic one would be, you know, buy two items, get your third item for a discounted price. Once again, you're using the promotion to also then drive up your average order value. And then a third option is to focus on products that have follow-on products or related service purchases. So this could be a product that also needs an app subscription in order to function properly, or it could be an initial product that you know needs regular extra ad buy-ons every three or four months because they need some certain parts of that product in order for it to function properly. A perfect example of this would be this fitness tracker that I'm having, it'll rename Nameless. But if you do know the name of this fitness tracker, just chuck it in the comments below. And this company put together a great strategy because the way that it operates is that you need to buy the fitness band, then you also need to pay for an app subscription. So they ran a promotion at the start of the year where they were giving the band away for free for people who bought a 12 month subscription. So what it was doing is yes, new customers were getting something for free, 
but they were having to commit to a 12 or 24 month subscription in order to get the free band. So you can see that's a great way of running a promotion that gives new customers real value without alienating your current customers. With all of that said, as promised, I wanna get into that screen share so I can take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up a promotion in Google Merchant Center. But it is important to note that for success with your Performance Max and your shopping campaigns, you need to make sure that you have a clear optimization strategy. And to help you with this, and so that you don't miss any of your optimization actions, I want you to follow that link in the description below, and you can get free access to my e-commerce Google Ads optimization checklist, which takes you through all of the different optimization actions that you need to complete, and it also lets you know how often you need to complete them. So after you finish watching the video, just follow that link in the description below so you can get instant access to my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. But right now, let's jump into that screen share. All right, when you're in Google Merchant Center to set up a promotion, you wanna go into your marketing tab over to the left here. And then when you're in marketing, you wanna go into promotions. Now, the good thing about Merchant Center is that it does walk you through these steps pretty easily. So what you wanna do from here is that you, when you're in promotions, you wanna to go to this blue plus Sign. And then it's going to take us through the step-by-step -step process of how we set up our promotion. So for this one, this brand is situated in the United States. So we want to select United States. And then we also want to select English. And this will obviously run automatically in the US dollar, which is what is set for this merchant center. And then you can just put where you want these ads to show. So whether you want it to show in your shopping ads, which is your paid ads, or whether you also want it to go across to your free listings. Generally, I include all of these, but you may just want to say we are only want this to be in our shopping ads. And then with your promotion category, you've got four different options. So you've got an amount off and a percentage off. So whether you want to run you know, $20 off or $100 off, or whether you want that to be represented in a 10%, 20%, 30% discount. Generally, what I find here, there is no right and wrong. Really what I look at is that if the percentage amount is under sort of 10%, but it might be like a 20 or 30 or $40 or $50 value, I would generally put up in a monetary discount. Or if that percentage is higher, I generally go in the percentage high, but you can just test it through to see which one works best. With offering a free gift, that could be, say for example, if you've got a free gift, and say for example, in filming this recording, it's coming up to Mother's Day over here in Australia, so you might have a promotion running for Mother's Day where if you spend over $50, you then also get a certain gift for free, and then there's also the free shipping offer. But let's just go to the percentage off. For whichever option you select, you can see here there's different promotion types which come up through here. So with the percentage off, what you can do is you can just be a straight percentage off, so 20%. Could be that you need to buy two products to get a percentage off, so that would be buy two, get the third for 50% off, or get the third for 30% off. And then you can just stipulate whether that can be multiple products or it has to be the same products. We're just gonna go for a straight percentage off. And then you need to put in the percentage discount, so we're gonna say 20%. In here, you can put if you want it to have a minimum purchase amount. So remember how I was saying in the strategies, you may say that this 20% only works if the user spends over $70. Then we just go through and click continue. And then what you do need to make sure, you need to add in a promotion title and a promotion ID. Now the promotion title needs to include what you're offering. So if you're giving $20 off, you would need to have $20 off. Or for this one, if it was the 20% off, we might go 20% off summer sale. Just do want to clarify that if we were just to have it as summer sale, this would not be approved because it does need to include the percentage amount or the dollar amount off in the title. Now this promotion ID, this is only internal, so no one else sees it. So that's why we just put 20 SS for short for 20% summer sale. And this is where it gets to your product. You can just go, I want this to apply to all of my products, or you may want to create a filter and this could be you might have a product type or an item ID. Now this is what I would usually recommend is I'd go into the product type and and then I would put that filter in there. Another great way of doing this is by doing an item group ID where you can add a promotion code. Or another great way of doing this is by adding in a promotion ID into your product feed. And then it just comes down to you need to make the decision of whether you want to add in a promotion code. So let's just say for this one, we want to go 20 summer. So that means that at checkout, the user actually has to type in 20 summer to get that discount. Or if not, you can just run it blank. And then finally, you just go through and set up your start and your end dates. So for this one, we're saying we want to start on the 1st of May. 
and then we can just also click an end date in through here and select these dates and click apply. And that's the step-by-step -step process that you can use to set up your promotions in Google Merchant Center. Now, as you saw by that screen share, the great thing about Google Merchant Center is that it does give you those little prompts and it does give you extra information as you go through that step-by-step -step promotion setup. So once again, thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And if you wanna know another way that you can boost the performance of your e-commerce campaigns, I want you to go through and watch this video right here, which takes you through how to use bidding in order to get more sales for your brand. See you next time.